Hi, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Marissa Pazant and I am the English language arts specialist here at Nebraska Department of Education. Got um, a couple of my wonderful colleagues with me and they're gonna introduce themselves um, here in just a moment. So if you're watching today, um, this is our um, English language arts revised standards uh, session one rollout uh, module. You can refer to it as a session or, or module, whatever uh, your preferences. Um, I would encourage you that if you have not had a chance to um, view the first recording, which kind of goes through the, uh, the standards revision process, I would encourage you to do that. It just kind of helps give a little bit of of context for how we get to a set of revised standards. Um, that video also kind of explains that um, currently, and we're, we're uh, about halfway, almost halfway through the, the 2021 school year, um, we are in the stage of exploration. Um, and so um, these four sessions, this being the first one, um, are to guide educators through um, that initial uh, exploration stage, um, and we'll go through some of some of the goals. But just know that there are um, four modules or sessions, and this is session one, and the title is the standards in instruction. Um, one more piece about this um, that I'll just share with you is that we're very excited that we have um, this rollout plan. This is something new. Um, this gives educators uh, across the state of Nebraska um, some consistency. Um, everybody's hearing the same messages. We're all kind of sharing, um, sharing that same vision of what high quality literacy instruction looks like. And um, it, it's a first for us and, and we hope that tradition continues. Um, as many of you know, uh, our math uh, standards, mathematics standards are going through the process of revision. And so the hope is that um, as we as we move forward with different content area standards that we maintain that consistency um, so that everybody's having some of the same, uh, some shared experiences with the revised standards. So welcome and, and thank you for being here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Abby Burke and she can introduce herself, tell you a little bit about her role. Thanks, Marissa. Hi, I'm Abby Burke, and I am the reading specialist with the Department of Education. And um, I was um, part of the team that really focused on the foundational skills of reading. Um, so I have a, a deeper knowledge of that area related to the revisions that we made. And I'm excited to share. Thank you. Hi, Angie. Hi, I'm Angie Dubuque. I am the uh, early literacy specialist for Nebraska Children's uh, Families and Nebraska Children Fam and Families Foundation. Sorry, um, and I work closely with NDE um, in regards to these rollouts and getting people excited for these new shifts. Thank you, Angie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, because this is a recording and, and I'll just, most educators, um, most of our ELA teachers are probably going to experience these sessions live. Um, I personally have done, um, conducted some of these or facilitated some of these sessions out across the state. Um, but if, um, if you're missing, if you, if you miss those opportunities, um, the recordings are just, you can do these independently, but there are gonna be some points in the presentation where you'll just wanna uh, pause uh, pause the recording, reflect. Um, so this is one of those um, slides where we're just gonna ask you to pause and reflect. So the first question we have up here, what has your experience or work with the new standards been like so far? And then what is one thing that you hope this rollout series does for you? So go ahead and pause your recording, um, reflect, and then we'll come back live. All right, well, hopefully you had a little time to kind of think through um, these questions, whether you're by yourself or in a small group. Um, and uh, Usually with when I'm uh, presenting this, uh, this session with um, uh, li live with a group of teachers, um, 
there's a range of experiences with the revised standards so far. Just remembering that we are in the year of exploration um, and then the following academic year would be um, initial implementation. So hopefully um, in your context, you are, um, your district and, and school leaders are creating some intentional time and space for you to explore the new standards. But we also realize these standards were just approved by our state board a couple months ago. Um, we know how crazy the school year uh, has been and we know about staff shortages and, and sometimes these things have to take a little back burner. So if you're fairly new to the standards, um, that's okay at this point, we still are um, in exploration. And um, hopefully you uh, thought of uh, something that um, the, the series does for you. Um, the experiences I've heard from educators so far is they really wanted to use it as an opportunity to explore their grade level um, a little deeper. All right, so we these are three goals that we have for our ELA standards rollout, and you'll see the same slide um, in all four of the sessions. Um, our first goal is really to articulate a shared vision of excellent ELA and literacy instruction for all Nebraska students. And uh, if you're not quite sure what we mean by shared vision, um, I think by the end of this presentation, you'll have a really good idea of what, what that vision uh, looks like. And then uh, you should be able to, to describe some of the major standards revision and how revisions and how they contribute to the instructional vision across the state. And then we're going to prepare to marshal resources to support implementation of the standards and the realization of that um, instructional vision. Um, as we go through, we'll kind of point to some of those um, other resources. Some are uh, some of our as you know, along with the policy document, which is the actual just grade level standards and indicators, there are typically a lot of uh, different supports, like a, there's a, a crosswalk between the legacy and revised standards. There's a glossary uh, draft. And again, some of those uh, resources are ready to go. They're available on the NDE English Language Arts site. Um, some of them are still in development. Okay, so this is what the sequence looks like. I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation that we have four modules or sessions. So we're here in session one, the standards and in instruction. Session two is titled the 2021 standards and shift. That goes deeper into our um, four instructional shifts. If you're not familiar with that term, um, I would just encourage you to kind of preview the uh, instructional shifts document. That is one of the supporting resources that we have and you can find that on the main uh, NDE English Language Arts website. Session three goes over the standards and high quality instructional materials. And then session four is gonna pro provide guidance as you move from the exploration stage into uh, the initial implementation stage. All right, so we're going to start here with just, uh, you'll see a question at the top of the screen there. Why not just traditional unpacking? We hear this term a lot when we talk about standards. They, the term unpacking and standards kind of goes hand in hand. Um, and we know that a lot of districts across the state will take the standards take, when they're new. Um, and there's a lot of um, reasons that uh, folks might go through the unpacking process and it can look different depending on who's doing it and what kind of processes they have established. But um, we do want to discourage folks from uh, taking teachers through that traditional unpacking. So I'm going to start at the bottom of this slide. Um, the Kansas De State Department of Education released a little guidance around this um, kind of some cautionary notes about what can the unintended consequences of uh, going through traditional unpacking. So the, the first quote there from this document, much of the conceptual understanding conveyed by the standards exists not in the standard statements themselves, but in ancillary materials. So we really want to um, be careful that we're not taking one standard and not really understanding it in the context of other standards or 
um, in other kind of supporting materials. Um, what you can see happen too, and I'm referring to the second quote there, sometimes that unpacking results in a list of skills. And that's definitely not um, best practice in terms of um, English language arts. We really want to look at all the strands, whether it's reading, whether it's writing, listening, speaking, researching, all of those things are interwoven. They don't happen in isolation. So we certainly don't want to take an ELA standard and treat it as an isolated um, skill and then break it down even further. Um, and, and then there's that mention of skill and drill instruction, which we certainly don't want in any content area. Um, and then uh, this last little piece here, distributing the product of unpacking to educators who are not directly involved in the process can often compound confusion. Uh, typically, you can't involve everybody in unpacking. Um, sometimes you can if you're, uh, if you're teaching in a smaller, maybe rural district, might be possible to bring everybody together. However, this is not a reality for our larger districts. And so when you leave people out of that process, they, they, they lose some of the um, intent behind it or some of the learning that came out of it. So um, flipping up to the top here um, as kind of um, replacement things to think about with unpacking, um, teachers need access to high quality instructional materials aligned with their standards. When you have high quality materials, they bring the standards to life. Um, and those high quality instructional materials often act as professional learning, like ancillary um, materials um, for the teachers. So really high quality, uh, great materials with great texts um, are gonna support you in understanding the standards, bringing them to life for students. Um, and then this last piece, more specific messaging and guidance may be needed so that teachers can implement standards in ways that align with state and district visions. Angie or Abby, would you like to add anything here before we move on? No, I think you covered that. All right, thank you. All right, so a little bit about um, this uh, slide here, Elmore's instructional core. As we were developing these modules, and by the way, speaking of their development, um, these modules were not just developed by Nebraska Department of Education. We had um, partners around the state. We did work with some external partners, Rivet Education Group. Um, we had representation from our educational service units. We had um, a, a representation from our Nebraska MTSS um, network. And we really thought it was important to kind of provide like a theoretical frame. Um, there, will, there is included in this little um, cluster of resources. If you would like to read further about Elmore's instructional core, there's a great article. Um, so I'll just try to provide a little summary um, of what this is and kind of how it relates to what we want to see with our uh, a product of our rollout work. So um, this kind of these three boxes here kind of describe like a, a sacred relationship um, for for teachers, the content they teach and the students that they teach. So you'll see those three kind of major uh, domains there. So there's the teacher, there's the content we teach, and then there's the students we have. And at the center of that is what we are asking students to do. So it's just the simple term task. The idea here is that if any one of these domains changes in a, in a significant way, the rest must change as well. You can kind of think of it as a three-legged stool and that if one of them is off balance, um, the stool is going to fall over. So we're going to consider um, that content piece there as an analogy for the revised standards. So if we're thinking about our revised standards in terms of the content that we teach, now those standards has cha have changed. That means that we as teachers need to change our instruction, our practices, um, our approaches, our, our thinking. Our students are also going to have to change. Um, not who they are as people by any means, but we are expecting students 
um, to think differently about text, to engage more with text, all of that goes back to the content. Um, so it's just all about balance. So this is kind of how we're, how we're framing, how we think that we really do need to attend to all of these important spaces in order for true change to happen. Anytime content area standards are revised, whether it's ELA, whether it's math, whether it's fine arts, whether it's social studies, they always raise the bar a little bit just for students. Um, and so if we are going to expect students to achieve a new um, benchmark or achieve um, more or better or differently, um, then we have to change something with our instruction. The standards don't do it alone. It's really how they come to life. Um, before I move on, um, Angie or Abby, is there anything that you would add here? Okay, I'm gonna keep rolling then. All right, so here's another point where you might just um, pause and reflect. So what have your experiences with revised content standards and their, what have been your experiences with revised standards and their relationship to teaching and learning? So this is kind of asking you to look back if you've been in the classroom long enough, um, have you um, been around for a standards revision? Um, I know that I was in the classroom when uh, the 2009 standards became the 2014 standards. So if you wanna just pause the recording, um, if you're with a small group of teachers, feel free to discuss with them and then we'll, we'll come back live here in just a second. All right, well, um, welcome back. Hopefully you had a little bit of, of time to reflect. I know that not everybody, um, for some of us uh, who are newer to the classroom, um, this might be our first time um, looking at uh, uh, revised standards. So um, Angie was going to share a little bit and then Abby was going to share a little bit and then we'll, we'll move, move on from there. Go ahead, Angie. Um, I was just going to comment about uh, the process here, how um, it's a lot more accessible for our teachers because we um, what you might notice is some pretty um, large shifts in the way that we are um, the standards have been um, revised. And so that takes a little bit more time to wrap our brains around, especially with our foundational skills uh updates and our writing updates so that's going to take some time to kind of push out and and understand so i like how um we are trying to do these in modules so that you have that time to to make that that shift in a in a processed way as opposed to okay here you go so <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that and I want to just to reiterate this idea that this year is an exploratory year to start to really think about what are these standards and um, what is our vision for excellent literacy and what are some um, ways that we can prepare um, and identify what our needs are in order to effectively begin implementation next school year. Yes, thank you. And it'll be interesting to respond to this question in a few years when we have another set of, of revised standards because they're never finished. And again, just a reminder, if you haven't had a chance to look at the other recording, it does kind of go through um, how we get to a new set of standards, um, the revision process, and especially the why behind that. There's some really good reasons that standards get revised on the timeline that they do. And, and uh, that first recording will kind of demonstrate that. So the agenda for this um, presentation is um, very general. There's, there's no time stamps on it. So first we're gonna talk about um, what it means to have an instructional vision. Um, the second part is my favorite. And uh, there are, there's a little series of videos that show what that vision can look like in practice. So you'll have an opportunity uh, to see some uh, recordings of actual classroom uh, practice and really some um, uh, exceptional uh, literacy instruction in all in each of the four videos. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about standards um, in that vision. So that's our general agenda for today. 
So a couple years ago, um, we did do, we engaged in some visioning work at the state level. So um, myself and I believe Abby was part of that um, together with our educational service unit, um, English language arts staff developers, we started looking at some examples of vision statements and kind of modified those, um, added some, tweaked some things here, here and there. And we did, um, end up writing um, a vision statement. Um, and this is just some, these are some pieces from that vision statement. It, it's a longer document, but we felt like this slide kind of captured uh, the main elements of that vision. So when we think about really high quality, excellent literacy instruction in which all students, no matter their language background, no matter their um, income, no matter, any, any of those demographics that we, we think about students, they come out of our um, K-12 academic experience as proficient readers and writers. And this is kind of what it looks like. They have regular practice with complex texts in their academic language, not just in the English language arts classroom, but they're having regular practice with complex texts in all of their content areas. We want them to have, um, opportunities to read, write, and speak in which they ground um, in evidence from buried texts. And again, you'll see that little note across content areas um, as defined by NAEP's reading framework. If you look at the front collateral um, of the revised ELA standards, um, we do have um, a, a little simple table that kind of breaks down like the um, the percentage of reading that students should be doing uh, in terms of literary and informational uh, texts. That third bullet point, we want students to build knowledge both through and for content rich fiction and nonfiction. And then of course, I always feel like this last bullet should kind of be up at the top, but we want all of our Nebraska students to have systematic, explicit, evidence-based instruction in foundational literacy skills. And we want those skills, um, that sequence to be grounded in the science of reading. Okay, I'm gonna have um, Abby just talk, kind of talk about some uh, additional guidance we have um, on early literacy. Okay, right, thanks Marissa. So uh, around the time that the Nebraska Reading Improvement Act went into effect, uh, the Nebraska Board of Education really doubled down on a focus on early literacy to um, because they recognize the, the value and the need to invest energy, time, and resources into supporting our earliest readers to be on track for uh, reading and reading acquisition and reading development. So this was a position statement that came about and was supported by the um, Nebraska State Board of Education. And I'm not gonna go through each of the, um, the bullet points, but um, it's just a, an opportunity to, to highlight um, where the Department of Education, where NDE and where our state stands in terms of supporting our youngest readers in um, becoming proficient. And I'll just add to this that um, along, uh, included with this statement, that last bullet point um, is talking about um, developing and implementing a scope and sequence of foundational writing instruction. And I'll just say that, and again, a reminder, go and watch the first video because um, it, it does go through the revision process why we made some of the changes, but one of the changes that you'll see with the 2021 revised standards is that we do now have a handwriting sequence along with um, a sequence of standards and indicators related to sentence level uh, construction. Um, and so that, that really represents a significant change, but as you can see, and as Abby indicated, our board um, in developing um, this position statement was very mindful that um, writing skills go hand in hand uh, with, the, with the foundational literacy skills. Okay, so this is another uh, pause and reflect. So um, this, this question has really been, um, this has been interesting to hear at how educators have responded um, I, I've just in I've presented this session um, in a variety of places now around the state and um, it's led to a lot of good conversations. 
um, part of part of the exploration stage of standards is really assessing your readiness to implement these. So when I ask this question, I would encourage you to really reflect on whichever answer choice you choose here, like A, B, C, or D. Um, I would encourage you to kind of follow up with, well, what can I do to kind of meet that challenge? So the question is, which aspect or aspects of this vision have you seen prove especially difficult to implement? Why or how so? So we're thinking about that vision and what part of it might be very hard to implement in your context. Is it with um, regular practice with complex text? Maybe in your context, that's not happening across the building. Maybe um, you as an ELA teacher don't feel like you have a good set of text in your material. So is that going to be a difficult shift? Um, reading, writing, and speaking grounded in evidence. I do hear this a lot, that students really struggle they can maybe name some evidence, but they can't always elaborate on it or, or really articulate themselves around a piece of evidence. Um, will it be difficult for your students to build knowledge um, through, uh, through and for content rich uh, literary and informational texts? Um, when I've heard educators um, indicate this one as a challenge, I often hear about um, English language learners and how sometimes they come in with different background knowledge than an English speaking student. So maybe that's going to be a challenge. Um, I also hear uh, this, this last piece, systematic explicit evidence-based instruction in foundational literacies. Not all schools have the types of foundational skills programs that are going to lead students to early literacy success, get them to coding, um, so they're well on their way to understanding what they read. So I'm gonna pause the recording here. Again, your question is, which aspects of this vision do you feel like are gonna cause you difficulty in your context, why or how so? All right, thank you for um, taking a moment to reflect. I would just encourage you that, you know, if you, if you feel like um, a given uh, part of this vision, um, might present some challenges. This is the school year that, that you're gonna really talk through those um, challenges and, and uh, start developing your strategy for meeting uh, any of those challenges. So now we're gonna move into um, looking at that vision in practice. Um, I will point you to um, included with the recording, um, you're also gonna see um, this document, there's a session one uh, video reflection or a note catcher. Please feel free to use that in, in whatever way is most comfor comfortable for you. You can type notes into it if you prefer to handwrite, that's fine too. But you'll want to have this session one um, handout handy. Oh, okay. So we have four um, videos to present. Each one of them is, um, a, a, some of them are two 10 minute clips. I believe the last one there, the high school example is all the same 10 minutes. Um, all of them are longer than 10 minutes. You are more than welcome to watch, watch them in their entirety, um, or you can just watch the, the clips. But um, we have four different classrooms here. The bottom, the bottom left is a first grade classroom. Um, you'll see a, uh, a phonics lesson. Um, the one above that is a second grade classroom. And then we have a fifth grade classroom. And then the bottom right is a high school. I believe it's 10th grade, but I could be wrong about that. So you're gonna watch these little clips. Um, if you're an elementary teacher, um, K-5, um, you are free to watch, you know, just the first two. If you're a kindergarten teacher and you just want to watch the first one, um, I actually think it was it's very valuable to watch all four of them. The conversations that we've had um, when I present live in front of groups is that um, it's really helpful to kind of see the vision and how it plays out all the way across. So you'll see some things, um, some techniques, some strategies that the, that the lower elementary teachers use. And you can see like pretty directly what those look like in a high school classroom. 
So when you have time, if you have time, it is kind of cool to watch all four of them. So even if you're a high school teacher, even if you just need a little boost of cuteness, I would encourage you to watch the watch all four of them because um, really good stuff um, in all four of these. Piggyback off of that, the power of watching the that vertical alignment, um, it really is, you know, it, it is powerful. Um, and it's also an opportunity to consider, we have students that no matter what grade we're, we teach, um, we have students that teach that are um, more proficient readers or less proficient readers. And so it gives us an opportunity to really think about how can I adjust my instruction knowing what I know by watching that first grade video or knowing what I know by watching that fifth or is it eighth grade video um, can be really helpful um, and impact your own uh, reflection on your own practice. So I think I just wanna put a stamp on that. Um, so this is a process that you use for each of the videos. Um, and as Marissa said, each video is about 10 minutes. Um, the, the segment that we're um, highlighting, again, it's a longer video, but this is a section that we're gonna highlight. Um, you'll see three main reflections on the handout. And I think it's important to, to note that um, no one lesson is going to really exemplify every aspect of um, instruction, um, the instructional vision that we've um, laid out for you. Um, but you will see some, you know, some exemplary components of that um, within these videos. So you'll, you'll have that, as Marissa um, mentioned, and make sure that you have access to a copy of the video reflection. Um, you're going to watch the video and then use that handout to help capture your um, thoughts and reflections um, and responses to the video. And then um, if you're watching this with someone, um, this is an opportunity to discuss with a partner or a small group and then identify some takeaways and questions um, that you can share um, beyond um, the group with whom you're working. And I'll just um, quickly run through the questions that you'll be responding to. Um, there's really, just, well, kind of 3.5 questions, but the first one is asking you, how does this lesson um, demonstrate the instructional vision? And there's four bullet points, so you don't have to flip flop back and forth. So it kind of lays out the instructional vision. How does what you see that teacher doing align with the vision and the students doing. Um, question two, I just wanna point something out about. So it asks, what specific evidence do you see of student learning? I usually encourage teachers um, to really look at what the students are doing as well. Um, sometimes I think our default is to put most of our attention on the teacher moves and what the teacher is doing, but really look at those students. Um, particularly, I want you to notice um, especially in the, um, the upper elementary and the high school videos, how much time the students are spending looking at a piece of text. Um, that's a, a really um, kind of interesting um, uh, thing to capture there. And then the last question on the back of the handout, um, which standards are being taught? Like, so which ones do you kind of see explicitly? And then which standards are just being supported through um, the practices of the teacher, the strategies that um, she's using, and you'll see page numbers. So um, our grade one standards are on page 25 of the document and so on. Um, so as you're responding to question three, certainly um, refer to our revised standards. Okay, um, I'm just gonna go through these four slides very quickly. You're gonna wanna pause whichever video that you're watching. So if you're watching grade one video foundational skills, you're gonna look at clips um, zero to five minutes and then 34 to 39. You're gonna wanna copy and paste this YouTube link uh, from the slide, put it into your um, browser to watch that. This teacher is using the um, core knowledge language arts AKA CKLA um, in her instruction. Uh, grade two um, video is uh, a lesson on uh, the Chinese New Year. There's a focus on early Asian civilizations, um, another example of CKLA instruction. Um, and for this particular one, you're gonna view clips zero to five and then 10 to 15. Again, copying and pasting that into your browser. They'll take you to YouTube. Okay, grade five classroom. Um, they're reading a tech, an informational text on Galileo Galilei. 
and they're in a unit, The Making of a Scientist, and they're using uh, Louisiana Guidebooks instructional materials, and you're going to be watching clips, uh, the four minute to the 14 minute mark. And then grade 10 is a high school classroom. Um, they are discussing a piece in From Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. It's a novel. So this is our uh, literary text um, example here, again, using uh, Louisiana guidebooks. And you're just gonna watch the first 10 minutes of that. Or of course you can watch the video in its entirety. So hopefully you have a chance to watch this uh, grade one video of foundational skills. As Marissa said, this lesson was taken from um, uh, a classroom where the teacher was using curriculum called what we call CKLA or uh, core knowledge language arts. And it was a first grade classroom. And some of the things that um, you may have discussed during your um, small group discussion or as you were watching independently some ideas that may have come to the surface were this idea that um, this foundational lesson um, you'll see a, a, a battery of standards that were addressed throughout the lesson um, she started she did I loved how she did this really strong uh, phonological lesson to begin with and then she was able to connect that um, phonological awareness to phonics as well as connecting it to making that connection to connected or decodable text. Um, and it was a really, you know, sort of seamless flow um, throughout that lesson. There was also, um, it was definitely um, explicit, explicit instruction. Um, there was a systematic scope and sequence. You could tell she knew um, she had started with, uh, had made reference to uh, long A um it, they'd already had instruction on and now she was doing long eye um, and then you'll also notice elements of multi-sensory opportunities for learning so those are just a few of the key points that you may have taken away as you're watching this video thank you for that and i'm sure um as you guys are watching you're just uh noticing tons of great things so um, I especially about this video, I really appreciated how she um, used the little video clip of the swimmer, the Olympic swimmers getting to the end of the lane, you know, just as sort of an anticipatory set, it obviously created a lot of excitement as her students were about to um, get into the text. Um, so that was really exciting. Um, just I based on conversation. Building. Yeah, how she, yes. how she yep. tied this into yes. knowledge building and vocabulary. Um, and it was so natural and seamless when you, you know, thinking about how you started with a phonemic awareness activity and took it all the way through connecting it to text and then also building a knowledge and vocabulary. Yeah. And then a lot of the uh, teachers, when I'm uh, working with groups with this session, they really um, point out a lot of the speaking and listening standards that kids are that are being reinforced just by the way that, you know, sometimes she asks kids to whisper. Um, and um, you'll notice in the subsequent videos too, um, and I'll talk about this a little bit more when it gets to that point, but um, the requirement to have students respond in complete sentence incomplete sentences is very evident as we go. You see it in this video, but you'll see it um, a little more strongly. So do pay attention to those uh, speaking and listening skills that she's really reinforcing. Very talented teacher. And Angie is gonna talk a little bit about her observations with the Chinese New Year video. Hi, hey, so um, this is a second grade classroom um, and as part of their curriculum, which again is the core knowledge language arts or CKLA uh, instructional materials, um, they are doing a unit on Asian civilizations and this particular lesson focuses on the Chinese New Year. Um, so as you're watching, um, pay attention to um, the conversations, the language and the prompting that the teacher um, is doing with these students. What really struck me about this video too is what a print rich environment, you can even see it kind of captured here in this image, but 
Mm -hmm. um, these students and these second grade students in this classroom are just surrounded by print. Um, they've got, you can see two full bookcases, you've got a word wall, there's a book underneath, there's a map, there's another, you know, some of those little um, uh, word pockets. So to me, this really speaks to the vision of just um, having a lot of access to um, rich, complex text. Um, clearly, these kids are, are in a print rich environment, and um, that shows just by looking. Not that all of our classrooms probably don't, our ELA classrooms don't look like that, but that's one, one thing that stood out to me about this one. Yes. Okay, moving on. Go ahead. Okay, moving on to grade five. Um, I just absolutely loved this one. Um, what really struck me as well as other teachers who have uh, given their feedback is how self-motivated the students were. Um, really how you'll see in this video, especially in the 10th grade, the teacher is more of a facilitator kind of in the background, literally sometimes like back in the corner, um, kind of facilitating, um, but the students are really doing the heavy lift. They're doing the work with the text. Um, what struck me too about this video was that the students are, the vast majority of this little 10 minute clip, their eyeballs are in the text. They're looking for evidence, they're annotating, they're reading aloud. Um, so just really, and this is what we should see. Sometimes people ask, you know, well, what, what are the big changes that we want to see with these revised standards? And I usually indicate a couple things um, and actually kind of cast it as a question, but how much time do our kids spend on an average school day with their eyeballs in text, reading it, analyzing it? Um, annotating it. And I think these are just really good demonstrations of um, that kind of uh, quality and quantity that we want to see um, as students read. This teacher too is like really good at um, in English language uh, learner um, terms, we call it recasting. So you'll notice in this clip and the next one, sometimes a student will say something and she'll kind of recast it, but she will give them the right uh, vocabulary word that goes with it. Um, and so uh, just something I noticed, like both in all of these examples, very vocabulary rich uh, teaching. You know, the first time Angie and I watched this together and we were just in awe of the, the artful and skillful way that the, the instruction put the text at the center um, and everything built out from there. Um, but the text was definitely the driving force behind all of the, the critical thinking and the, the hard thinking and hard work that the kids were doing around um, making sense and knowledge building. Yes, thank you. So I'm gonna um, move ahead to the uh, grade 10 video and just share some of my own observations and some that others have had. Um, this was a truly phenomenal uh, 10 minute uh, example of uh, just a, a lot of great things. But um, again, you see the teacher as more, her role is more facilitator. But in this clip, you really see how she pushes um, students. She really challenges their thinking. She doesn't just accept what they say. She kind of like asks them a follow-up question and really gets them back to the task and back to the essential question, which by the way, um, the, the students, if you watch the, the entire clip and there's a little interview with her, um, the students developed their own essential question that they were going to respond to. Um, and that is aligned to one of our um, standards, uh, reading literary text is where students use um, literature and they use the research process to generate their own uh, strands of inquiry. So you see that really strongly here. Um, again, what st always strikes me about this one um, is how often um, uh, just the extent to which the kids were engaged in text. Um, they didn't really answer too many questions without looking back um, 
to the text. Um, and in both of these last two clips, so you might have noticed like the kids are reading a novel, which by the way, I read this novel in a college class. So it's pretty impressive um, that these 10th graders are reading it, but um, they had just a little photocopied section of the text instead of the whole novel. You saw their novels out at their seats. Um, but this teacher is using a close reading strategy in which she's pulled a really key passage or couple of pages um, that really gets at the heart of the theme that she's trying to help them analyze. Um, and so that's a really great strategy to have um, give your students opportunities to look at a smaller piece of text on a piece of paper as opposed to um, directly out of the book. Okay, so that kind of concludes our um, uh, video portion. I hope you guys enjoyed those. And I know I watched them several times as I'm sure Abby and Angie have as well. And now we're just gonna wrap up our time together just talking about uh, standards in the vision. So um, some reflection questions, um, how specifically do these lessons, we're gonna call them plural if you watched all of them, how do these demonstrate components of Nebraska's instructional vision? And hopefully you just have a clearer sense of that after you've seen, um, seen those pieces. Um, my dream and my, one of my goals is to eventually have a little repository of Nebraska teachers that we can use for purposes like this. Um, we were kind of just starting to get that off the ground or starting some conversations about um, filming in some Nebraska schools, some actual ELA classrooms that are um, uh, hall that are just showing uh, excellent literacy instruction. But then COVID came along. And so uh, we kind of backburnered that for a while. But hopefully someday we'll have some real Nebraska specific. And then uh, we talked to you about some specific evidence of student learning. Hopefully you were able to key in on some of those student behaviors. Um, and then we talked about standards being uh, taught directly and then just supported through the course of the lesson. Um, and here, I, I just wanna talk a little bit about number three. Um, the reason we kind of pose this question in this way is that hopefully you have an idea of how really rich literacy instruction is it's very multifaceted um, there's a lot of layers to it and you see evidence of a lot of different um, standards and indicators within that same lesson even though if we didn't really see a lot of writing um, in in the last clip um, they were going to respond to their essential question um, with a written piece a formal um, analysis we didn't really see a lot of that it's hard to kind of film writing, but um, just in rich instruction that this you'll see a lot of standards kind of bundled together um, as opposed to, oh, I'm working on this standard today and um, I'm just going to choose a text that helps me teach this standard. Um, rich instruction just has a lot of um, standards built into it. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this over to Angie. She's just gonna talk about our, um, kind of close us out with some of our uh, key takeaways. Yeah, so um, in thinking about all of the videos uh, that we watched and the things that we appreciated and noticed, some of the key takeaways when we're thinking about bringing those all back to the vision um, for ELA instruction is um, kind of the engaging way in which those teachers brought students into the lessons, into the texts. Um, building academic vocabulary um, and knowledge um, background uh, and making connections among texts and things that, that they um, saw. So um, that is aligning to a lot of the things that we have in our vision for practicing with complex texts, um, reading, writing, and speaking um, on the very text, looking at rich nonfiction and fiction, um, also in the foundational literacy skills, some very explicit um, systematic instruction while doing all of that knowledge building um, as well. And that, that does require some high quality instructional materials um, to really help uh, bring the students into um, the learning and engaging them in the learning. So the 2021 revisions to the states are intended not to alter this vision, but to support it more strongly than ever. 
Um, and so, as you can see in the comparison between um, the standards, um, they work together, uh, the 2021 um, standards work together in service of coherent integrated instruction. They're not discrete, they're very detailed, um, very intentional in uh, what our students need to be proficient readers. Um, and that's inclusive of those high standards when teaching and um, giving students the meaningful access to great appropriate learning and complex texts. Thank you so much. Hey, okay, and then just one uh, final takeaway. This is in the spirit of kind of putting it all together um, is, is this reflection question and, and feel free to respond to this in, in your own mind or just uh, reflect with others if you're, if you're watching this as a group. But what role do the standards play in Nebraska's vision for excellent and equitable ELA instruction? equitable meaning all of our students, no matter their background, um, no matter their academic status or any their linguistic background, they have the same opportunities for grade level uh, texts and instruction. So what role do the standards play? And finally, I would just like to thank you. So this is again, uh, the first in a, in a series of four, we've got three other modules. This is the first one. Um, so as you're as you're able, um, I would in, just encourage you to participate in the other three modules, whether that's with your with your district folks or maybe your uh, your um, ESU region within your ESU region. So um, if you have any questions, all of us are available. Um, it's uh, you can find our contact information on the Nebraska um, English Language Arts website. And thank you so much for joining us today.